Doug and PA back with another video. Apparently, Medium.com wants to talk about toxic femininity. This article is from March 7th of 2020, and it says, Toxic femininity, ladies, we need to talk. Time to fess up. Femin femininity has a dark side, too. Before we get into this article, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It's just you support me and the content over here. And let's see what Roxana Azimi has to say about toxic femininity. And to say I'm surprised that there are even articles like this would be an understatement because we all know the terms toxic masculinity, how bad men are. But are we starting to see a change in the conversation or is this for clicks? Let's get into this article and see how valid this is, okay? We've all heard the phrase toxic masculinity thrown around. Yes, we have. Think aggressive, dominant behavior, objectifying, catcalling, mansplaining, heck, and even manspreading. Guys, I think this article is going to be full of all sorts of buzz terms, so get ready. Buckle up. It says, trust me, I'll be one of the first to call these out. I'm sure you will, Roxana. But what about the reverse side? Toxic femininity. Is it a thing? If you're watching this channel, you'd know it's a thing. So let's see what she has to say. Although there's still a way to go, more women than ever are bagging those high-level degrees, jobs, and positions of power. But I can't help but notice that instead of sharing a sisterly bond of pride and celebration as our foremothers may have hoped, we often, we often look at our high-achieving ladies with a paranoid and jealousy-steep side-eye. I always say this, guys. Women can't stand each other. They really can't. Why has there never been a woman president? Because women don't vote for women presidents. We all know it's true. And they expect men to understand them and like women as a whole, but then women can't stand each other. Explain that to me. It says, just as in the past, and indeed to some extent still today, women competed for male attention with the goal of marrying well. They now seem to do the same, but for the attention of a boss, a professor, or a client. The motivation may have evolved, but the method has not. Look, if you're a beautiful woman and it can get you ahead in any kind of industry, they're going to do it. Although I, there are small pockets of women, especially in liberal cities like my home city. You know, I'm from Washington State or in Portland, where these beautiful women will make themselves ugly to fight the patriarchy. I should do a video on that. Guys, have you do you have any women in your life who make themselves ugly to fight the patriarchy? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> anyway. Um, the, the intrinsic envy for other women and the immediate comparison many of us do subconsciously, is she more attractive, more qualified, and more charming, creates a toxic work or academic environment for all involved. What is toxic femininity? Roxanne, please tell us. Toxic femininity is essentially our defensive response to a long-standing threat of failure, underappreciation, or fervent urge to prove ourselves over our male peers, likely passed down over generations. Although this insecurity may seem greater to some than others, many of us react to high pressures by resenting the women around us who are actually fighting the same battles. You know that girl you knew back at school, everyone knows at least one, who gossiped, laughed at others behind their back, seemed overly concerned with popularity, and even engaged in a little back to put others back in their place? Well, that mean girl trope, unfortunately, doesn't end once she graduates. See, guys, see, us guys, we know that. We know that the girls that we that were the, the cheerleaders or the drama queens in high school are going to be like that their entire lives. Even when they get older, even when they hit the wall, even when they become single mothers, even when they get in a bunch of debt, they're still going to be like that. And women are finally starting to, to catch on because a lot of these women are their bosses now. Though it may not be the same perpetrator each time, you can guarantee that wherever you find yourself, you will find her or rather she will find you. And although it may hurt to accept it, even you may not be immune to acting out in this way. Toxic femininity in the workplace. There's admittedly a lot of discussion now around making workplaces better for women. But it's not just toxic masculinity we should be stamping out. It may be an inconvenient truth for some, but women can be aggressors too, particularly against their fellow females. In fact, women are 14% to 21% more likely than men to report experiencing Uncivil treatment from female co-workers. Boom, there it is. Guys, I did a video. One of my first videos I did was talking about how women prefer male bosses more than men do. Over half of women, almost half of women surveyed, but I think it was Pew Research, said that they would rather have a male boss than a female boss. And this type of stuff is why. 
However, we often hesitate to speak as openly about toxic femininity as its infamous masculine counterpart. So as not to reinforce the negative stereotypes about women being petty or worse still bitchy. But with other 70% of women, with over 70% of women now admitting to feeling bullied by their female colleagues, it's time we talk about this issue. 70% of women now admitting to feeling bullied by their female colleagues. Guys, let me know what you think about this. Did you know this, this information? I did because I did a research for another video, but let me know what you think. Because toxic femininity, the telltale signs, passive aggression, think eye rolling, patronizing comments, fake laughing and niceties, smiley faces following a harsh word email, the list goes on. Sabotage, lying for personal gain, giving misleading advice, mocking others for their work or decisions, manipulating situations to come out on top and make others look bad. Jealousy, resentment, and bitterness towards other women for their looks, popularity, achievements, or lifestyles. Shaming or judging other women, even if only internally, for being too sexualized, not sexualized enough, too confident, not confident enough, too fat, too thin, etc. What do you think you see women doing each other, the, doing to each other the most out of these four? Because I think it's, I think shaming is number one. Passive aggression is number two. Jeal Jealousy is number three. And then sabotage is number four. Toxic femininity, looking deeper. But why is this toxic behavior so rampant? Because women can get away with whatever they want and don't hold themselves accountable. And society doesn't hold them accountable either. That's why, Roxana. Essentially, women prefer to attack other women at work because of how society is structured. Women have traditionally targeted each other in personal context. You may have the mother-in-law trope, the fake best friend, the classic sister rivalry, and so on. Yes, a lot of women have all those. We're led to believe that female-to-female relationships are doomed to be catty, perpetuating this unfortunate stereotype as though we are programmed to do so because they are catty and doomed from the start. Women can't stand each other. But whether at home, at work, or in social setting, this kind of insidious passive aggression is often difficult to call out, since it often operates under the sweet and smiley cover of feigned niceness. So once identified, should we shun these supposedly toxic women? W wouldn't that mean playing a role in the toxicity ourselves? N that would never happen because the sisterhood is too strong and too accepting of foolishness. To we must bear in mind that toxic femininity comes from a place of long-term societal conditioning and deep insecurity. I would disagree with that because a lot of women are just bitches. We are all just trying to get ahead and make our mark in an often challenging world that has lingering gender biases. So I, there's past, there's going to be somewhere in here where th they blame some of this on the systems men created. So let's look out for it, guys. Past hurdles can make other appear, others appear to be nothing more than competitors standing in the way of our own recognition and success. But we must all get past this way of thinking to better support each other. Are we bad feminists for calling this out? I would actually argue the opposite. Feminism is about claim, isn't about claiming what women can, that women can do no wrong, but about the equality and empowerment of all. And so women putting other women down goes against feminism's very core. Now, how many, it says, Feminism is about the equality and empowerment of all. Do you guys agree with that in the modern, in the modern day and age? Because I don't. Feminism is about female superiority most of the time. Women want all the benefits and none of the bad parts. Especially since this issue seems to stem from insecurities over the very same gender inequalities that feminism is fighting. When women in competitive environments turn against each other rather than being mutually proud that Against all odds, they both made it. It really is rather sad. We can do better, Roxana says. Toxic femininity. Some final thoughts. Once we realize that success is not lim a limited resource and that we can support and empower the women around us without our own flame diminishing, in fact, the opposite is true, then we can begin to ensure more supportive working environments and healthier female relationships. Do women generally face more obstacles to rise to the top? Unfortunately, yes. Are women generally less aggressive and direct than men? This is not always, but often the case. You see how 
the obstacle the obstacles comment she can say unfortunately yes and then when she talks about being less aggressive and direct than men she has to she has to caveat uh she has to put this little thing at the beginning she can't just be direct and say yes but at the risk of conforming too tightly to gender stereotypes women tend to be particularly prone to destructive sabotaging and passive aggressive behavior when they feel threatened or insecure that is a hundred percent true if you're in a relationship with a woman, these are her tactics, guys. Destructive, sabotaging, passive aggressive behavior. And, and in the current modern day, physically aggressive too. It's simply how we have been conditioned in society. No, women has has survived this long because they can't physically de defend themselves. They're only these are their only tools. They they can't physically fight a man and the they're physically weaker, so they have to use emotional tactics. It's how it's been forever. We're led to believe that this is how to be ambitious and competitive, but it's not the only way. Let's be clear. It's not the fierce determination and putting ourselves first that I am criticizing, but that definitely can stay, and we can actually do with a great deal more of it. However, when this thirst for success sours into pushing other women out of your way, then it's time to take a step back. I'm going to start trying to find more articles about this. Because I was surprised to find this one. I was looking for another type of um, of article for a video, and I found this. Guys, let me know what you think about this. Or do you think it's kind of a turning point that we're seeing articles about this? What would be Roxana, Roxana Azimi's motivation for writing this? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.